Westside, Westside, Westside. Yeah, they got yeah. it bumping. We on the top, woo, woo. 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 Had to get it with my guys, never stop, woo, woo. Mr. Going. Right, we'll take first question here on the left side, third row on the aisle. Hi, Jason. Uh, Eduardo from Babel. I just wanted to ask you, what role do you think D Coach Drew Hanlon has had in your development? Because we've seen him being super close to you over the past couple of years and throughout your career as a whole. Uh, yeah, I, um, I give Drew a lot of credit uh, for my development and helping me get to where I'm at. Um, I started working with Drew when I was in, in eighth grade. And um, every off season, um, since then we've, we've we've worked out together. Uh, and that's like family, and you know I've said it a million times that uh, you know Drew is is a big reason um, in helping me get to where I'm at, and uh, you know I'm very thankful for for everybody that uh, played a part in helping me uh, you know reach my goal and continue to to strive in in this space that I'm in. Rachel, fourth row. Jason, obviously, your hi, your last finals up after game one. What did you learn from that experience that you can apply in game two this time around? Uh, that you know, it's far from over. It's an extremely long series, uh, and and not get too excited or, or get too down about a win or a loss. Uh, you know, don't feel like that. The series is over and that we had it won because of the last game. Uh, and if you lose a game, right? Uh, we talk about it all the time that it's going to take however long it takes. Uh, you know, if that's four or five, six or seven, whatever, uh, you know, we're trying to just take it one game at a time and not skip any steps. Whatever we got to do to win, um, that's what we have to do. John on the right, third row. Jason, how you doing? Uh, we've seen you chip your game a little bit. Um, basically, like you're reading the game differently. That's my perception, and and the team is doing a lot better. Is that something that you did at the beginning of the series, or is just you just taking whatever the game is giving you? It's just about reading the game. Uh, draw so much attention, uh, you know, when I have the ball in my hands, and uh, you know, it's it's about creating an advantage. We always talk about that. Um, watching film, creating an advantage, finding a mismatch that we want is, and it might not always end up in the shot for you, right? Or if you set a screen and get a smaller guy on you, um, you know, just having that mismatch and, and, and calling for the ball, right? It, it may draw other defenders to, to help and we can pin in for somebody else to get a shot. Um, and those things, you know, won't show up in the stat sheet, but um, it's part of our execution and Sometimes you have to make, you know, a sacrificial cut or, or things like that, um, you know, to generate good shots. John on the right, third row. Jason, John Corrales, Boston Sports Journal. Along those same lines, when you get that matchup that you're looking for, um, are there times where you think, I could score here, but I have to make this pass? Or are you thinking like, I know if I get this teammate involved, he might hit a couple of shots. That's going to pay off later. I mean, what, what's that thought process aside from just, I see this guy in front of me, I want to cook him? Yeah, uh, I, I mean, it's a lot that goes into that, right? Time of the game, um, time of score, you know, who's in the game with me, um, all those things play a part. Uh, and, you know, a lot of times if, if you can generate shots for other people and uh, make the defense have to, um, respect those guys. Um, it, it eventually opens a, a lot of other things up for you um, later in the game that you can take advantage of. Tim, standing on the left. Tim McMahon, ESPN. Uh, when Jason Kidd was in here, he made a point to say Jalen Brown's the Celtics' best player, which raised some eyebrows, obviously because of your status. Uh, wh what's your reaction to J. Kidd saying that? Uh, uh, no reaction. Uh, this is a, a team sport. Right, we we understand that we wouldn't we wouldn't be here if we didn't have JB on our team, um, and we could say that for a lot of guys. Right, we we've all played a part um, in getting to where we're at, uh, and we understand that 
you know, people try to drive a, a wedge in between us and, uh, you know, I guess it's a smart, smart thing to do or, or try to do. Uh, but we've been in this position for many of years of guys trying to divide us and say that one of us should be traded or one's better than the other. Uh, so it is, it's not our first time at the rodeo. Adam, go ahead. In the middle. Jason, you referenced it a little bit earlier, but what's kind of the, the process for you of identifying at the start of the game how a team is trying to defend you in particular, certain coverages, and how you can be most effective, and then how does it kind of evolve over the course of a game? Uh, yeah, I'm, they really just kind of test your discipline. Uh, they test, it. are you going to make the right play over and over and over again? Uh, even if it's not resulting in you getting the shots or you scoring all the points, uh, but you know, you're know you constantly scoring at a high rate. Uh, we're up 20 at halftime. Uh, they're trying to test it if human nature is going to play a part of wanting to get yourself going um, instead of doing all the things that um, is making the game easier for the team. Uh, and, you know, you just have to stay committed to uh, doing what's right and, and, and making the right play until they adjust um, their defense. Back center. Hi, George here. Um, you said about passing the ball, the right player making the right shot, game on the line. You get doubled. Who are you passing to? Who's ever open. <laughs> Next question on the left on the aisle in the back. Ben Katia from ESPN Deportes. Dallas has found a way throughout the postseason to respond after a loss. What would you say they've been successful at coming off a loss that will pose a different challenge for you guys tomorrow? Yeah, we, uh, we understand that. You're right. I feel like we're going to get a, I don't want to say their best shot, uh, but you know, we, we understand that they're going to play a lot better. Uh, and we have to be prepared for that, um, not let it catch us off guard or you know, wait till the second quarter if we're down to, to, to lock in. Um, understanding from the jump that you know, they're going to come out and play faster. They're going to you know, shoot more threes. Or they're going to play harder. Uh, so I think knowing that coming into the game is the first step. Um, and then, you know, focus on what we need to do. It's a lot of things that we watch in film uh, that honestly we feel like we could be a lot better at. So um, all in all, we feel like tomorrow is going to be, tomorrow should be really fun. Uh, Jason, Jason Stefan Bonnie with the New York Post. Um, when, when you said peop, people have been trying to drive wedges between you and Jalen, does, I mean, how have you guys handled that in the past? Um, is that a conversation you guys have? And have you guys like overcome that? Yeah, uh, we've had conversations about it before. Uh, and in all reality, it's just we've just had to deal with it for, for a very long time. Uh, and I think it's part of us maturing as, as men, right? Uh, very, very young coming into this league and uh, just had to, to deal with all the ups and downs of essentially the success that we've had. Um, there's been positive things and there's been negative things that, that come with that. And uh, we're not the, the first duo, you know, to, to go through that process and we won't be the last. Uh, so understanding that, you know, that side of it and uh, just keeping the main thing, the main thing and, and, and focusing on the job that we um, have in front of us. Gary, last question in the middle. Touching on that last question, how have you Mature. I mean, in the social media age, you can't help but hear criticism. I think a couple years ago, you, you, you were on Twitter, you opened yourself up to questions, and the first question was about the 22 finals. Like, and why did, you know, like, how do you kind of ignore the criticism, or do you ignore it? How do you not internalize it? How do you, at 26, how do you not let it bother you that it would have at 21? Yeah, uh, and I think, uh, like I said, or just over time, you, you learn how to deal with things. And there was a point, right, um, in my career where things um, did affect me or, or, or would bother me to, you know, hear people talk about me on TV. Uh, but you just have to come to a, a, a realization that, for one, don't take it personal. 
Um, you know, people have a job to do. You have to respect that. You know, they have to go on TV and, and give their um, analysis of, you know, things that they see and, and watch. Um, and that's fair. And you understand that the what the media side has done for the game of basketball and how we've all benefited from that. Uh, and again, like, people wouldn't talk about me if I wasn't one of the best players. And uh, I'm not the only player that they've ever talked about, and I won't be the last. Uh, so understanding that side of it. Thank you, Jason. Thanks, everybody. This concludes the session for today. West side, west side, west side. Yeah, they got yeah. it, Bobby. Hey. 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 We on the top, woo, woo. we on the top, woo, woo. we on the top, woo, woo. had to get it with my guys, never stop, woo, woo. Mr. Go and split the pie, never stop.